Hello everybody and welcome to the um, 2021 and probably 2022 guide to SCP Seeker Laboratory. In this guide we will talk about pretty much everything a beginner needs to know. This is not a super advanced guide, but if you're just starting to play SCP Secret Lab, you should really keep watching until the end. Alright, so the game is set in, in a secret government SCP facility. Um, where a major where a major containment breach has happened and there's SCPs everywhere. C depending on the role, you've got to escape or guard the facility. So let's just get into the video. A few things to note before we really start the video. Uh, number one, this is a very social game, so I really heavily heavily re recommend a microphone to play this. Cues for voice chat, pretty helpful. Um, you don't need an above average PC, but I do recommend not having a potato. This game does need some, does need a an okay uh, computer or OS to to run. Uh, otherwise, you can just turn down the, the graphics, and that also works. Keycards may be the most important aspect of SCP Secret Laboratory, mostly because, well, they're keycards, and you need keycards to open doors because it's a top secret government facility. <clears throat> I will list all the keycards and the rooms they, and the rooms I'm sure they're open and the rooms they might open. Um, I will list them from least to best, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, worst to best. So without further ado, let's get to listing keycards. The janitor keycard is the worst keycard in the game and can only open SCP-914. But it's pretty useful if you want to upgrade it. It upgrades to scientist on fine and it upgrades to a zone manager keycard on one to one. The scientist keycard is what scientists spawn with. It isn't very good, but it's it's good enough. It can open SCP-914, SCP-012, and SCP-096. If you're a scientist and you don't have a keycard, you should hold on to it. It upgrades to a major scientist on fine in 914, and it op and it upgrades to a zone manager keycard on one to one in 914. These uh, the major scientist keycard is an upgrade to the scientist keycard. It can do everything the scientist keycard does and it can um, open checkpoints. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That, that, that's pretty cool. The containment engineer keycard is an okay keycard. It can open checkpoints and every single SCP um, it used to be able. It used to be able to open new con in intercom, but it cannot anymore. The guard key card um, is the key card guards spawn with, and can open doors like uh, it can open 914, level one armories, and checkpoints. It isn't that good, but it can be upgraded to the next following cards. The MTF private key card. Um, I know it says cadet, but it's the same color, so good enough. Uh, the MTF pri card, the, the MTF private key card, can unlock level two armories, SCP nine fourteen zero twelve, and um zero nine six. The MTF sergeant key card, and yes, all the yes, these pictures are being outdated, but just remember these are called sergeant keycards. The MTF sergeant keycards can open everything the c MTF cadet keycards can open plus gate access which is pretty helpful. Only only about three or four of these spawn in the facility. If you're a scientist or a class D you're gonna want one of these. The MTF captain keycard, and yes this is also outdated, can open everything in the facility except the nuke room outside and SCP-106's containment chamber. And it also can open SCP-079's containment chamber, but you don't really need to open that in the game. 
Well, you actually can't open it in the game yet. The zone manager keycard can open um, SCP-914 and checkpoints. It it's um it's surprisingly good for what it can only open. Honestly, it upgrades to a facility manager keycard. The facility manager access card can open everything except armories. It's pretty good if you're a class D. The O5 keycard is the highest level keycard and can open every single thing in the facility. Here is a 914 upgrade path for the keycards. There are a lot of items in SCP Secret Laboratory, so I'm just going to go through the most important items, and yeah, so here we go. First of all, let's start off with a few healing items. The med kit or first aid kit, kit is just a med kit or a first aid kit. It takes about, um, I don't know, six seconds or three seconds to take, so it's, it's more of a combat item. If you're like in combat, you might want to take it, so yeah. Next we have adrenaline, which gives you, I'm not sure about health, but I do know it gives you AHP, about, like, probably 25, and you can have up to 75 AHP in total. Next up we have the pills, not the SCP-500 pills, of course, the, uh, painkiller pills. They do, I'm pretty sure they do not give you five health at the start anymore when you take them they slowly regenerate your health those are better for downtime not in combat because they heal really slowly next we have up um the radio the radio is just a radio um the default key is v and if you take the radio out, out in your inventory it's right click to turn it off and right click to turn it on it's defaultly at medium range, and you can left click to change the range. The longer the range is, the more battery the radio uses. Um, but I, a lot of people don't like the radio, but I personally do because it's pretty helpful for long distance communication. Next up, we have the flashlight, which is literally just a flashlight. It, um, it's it illuminates stuff. I guess it can be helpful if it's really dark. Um, or when 079 gets recontained. Then there's the coin, and you can flip it, which I guess is pretty cool. Like everything else in SCP Secret Laboratory, weapons are also very important. In this section, I will go over all the weapons in SCP Secret Laboratory. I will not go over their complex stats and everything, but... Um, I will probably list good situations to use them in, and that's about it. The Epsilon 11 is one of the best guns in SCP Secret Lab. Um, all MTF units spawn with this, except for the privates. They spawn with prospects, which we will talk about next. Um, the Epsilon 11 is a short to medium and maybe even like medium to long range weapon. It's pretty multi-purpose. It has a, um, it has a decent fire rate and pretty decent damage. So if you're a class D and you have one of these, then you can wreck some scientists. The cross vex are also an MTF weapon. These spawn throughout the facility, usually in armories. Um, uh, one or two of these spawn in the level one armory in light. So if you're a class D and you want to get armed, that's a good gun. MD, yeah, MTF private spawn with it. It has a f it has a few um, attachments, and I recommend it. It I I I also recommend using it in short to medium range. Usually, just short though. It's like an SMG. Pretty much repla replaces the P90. It has a pretty it has a good fire rate, and yeah, the MP7, which is another MTF weapon, is the main weapon of the guards, uh, the facility guards. Facility guards spawn with these weapons. Um, yeah, they they take uh, the black ammo boxes. The previous two weapon weapons take the blue ammo boxes, by the way. And yeah, they're they're pretty good. High fire rate, short range, 
not very good for taking out SCPs, but if you want to kill a Class D or a Scientist, they're pretty good. They spawn in a lot of armories. <coughs> the COM-15 um, is just a pistol, but it is a pretty good pistol if you're a Class D or Scientist in light. Um, it isn't very reasonable for killing SCPs, but it is pretty reasonable for taking out Class Ds or Scientists. The COM, the COM 18, all, um, formerly known as the USP, uses the black ammo boxes. So does the COM 15. Uh, it's it's pretty no it's pretty much just a better COM 15. It uh, it has a heavy barrel, which is really good. If you head, you should be able to one shot people if you headshot with it, and it's just a pretty good weapon. It's just a pistol, so you can find it in light in a lot of level one armories. I recommend using this from um, from short range. It has a not very good fire rate, but it's a pistol. What do you expect? Here we have the revolver, also known to the meme community as the Big Iron. Um, it's a short range weapon with not very good fire rate, to be honest. But it's still a really good weapon. Uh, you can pre you can middle click to uh, to like. Uh, hammer the hammer thing back I don't, I don't know I'm not a gunsmith um it's this is the first of the chaos insurgency weapons chaos insurgency uh, um repressors I'm pretty sure spawn with these uh they take special ammo um so you cannot find this ammo in the building um and yeah the shotgun, also a weapon of the Chaos Insurgency Repressor, is a short-ranged shotgun. It's really OP against SCPs. I really re recommend it, and not much to be said about this epic weapon. Nice. The Logister is an is a Chaos Insurgency Marauder weapon. It has a very high fire rate. It's a nice tan color. It's short. It's short range, and if you have good enough aim, it can be short to medium range. And I really uh, recommend it. Um, you can't find any weapon for this. I mean, sorry, any ammo for this in the facility. Um, the only ammo is like all the Chaos Insurgency weapons. You can only find the ammo with um, insurgents. Please note that uh, uh, that weapons can be upgraded in 914. As you may know, um, not all SCPs are living. There are a lot of um, item SCPs, which are inanimate and like aren't conscious or something. Um, in this section of the video, we will be going over those types of SCPs. So there's four of them, and they're all really easy to find with the right keycard. The first SCP item is SCP-268, the hat. Um, SCP-268 makes you temporarily invisible to all SCPs. Please note that it does not work to 939 and 079. Um, and by the way, it also works with humans. That's It's pretty helpful for your class D wanting to escape. So yeah, there's unlimited uses on the hat, but you can only like um, use it every two minutes, one time. Um, the effects of it last about ten minutes, and you can tell it works when your screen like kind of goes blue. All right. Um, for all the, uh, and by the way, for all the item SCPs, you can, like, um, access them by the pedal stools. You need a major scientist keycard in them. Next up we have SCP-018, the ball. This one only spawns once in a facility, just like the hat, and 018 is just, like, a ball. Except it's, like, ultra bouncy, so when you throw it, it, like, just literally bounces everywhere. Um, it, it bounces so fast, it like blows up eventually. Um, if you're an SCP, if you're stuck in a room with this, it can do a bit of damage. If you're a human, and this blows up next to you, or it even hits you while it's bouncing, it can also do a bunch of damage. The next SCP is SCP-207, which is a Coca-Cola bottle. When you drink it, it makes you go faster, but it takes away health. You can drink up to four, and you'll go four times faster, but you'll lose four times more health. Standing still makes you lose health slower, and running makes you lose health faster. Your health deteriorates. At one coke, your health deteriorates at 1 HP per um, 10 seconds, but when you start running, inst 
instead your uh, health deteriorate, deteriorates one HP every I think four seconds. Next up we have SCP-500, also known as the Panacea. SCP-500 is the is just a bottle of pills that can cure everything. But in SCP Secret Laboratory, drinking this gives you um uh 100 health, so it will fully dis um fully re uh, reheal you, and it also gives you a few seconds of fast regeneration. You can also take them really fast. So we finally made it, or you finally made it at least. We're now at the SCP section. This is just the, ex the SCP uh, section, um, where you're going to learn about all the SCPs um, in just summaries over here. I, w I will not put the links to them in the, in the description, but I will put the SCP wiki in the description so you can go search them out yourself. yourself. So without further ado, let's go. SCP-173 is a statue made out of concrete and spray paint, which is pretty cool. Um, that cannot move in a direct line of sight. So if you look at it, it cannot move. It kills you. It kills people by snapping their neck. If you are playing by 173, uh, you can press F1 to look at your controls. But to simplify it, G is to um, do your business on the floor. And when people walk over that, they can't move very fast. So it's pretty effective to put it in an elevator where MTF spawn, or at a checkpoint, or just in front of any door you want. Um, you can press shift, not hold, you do not have to hold shift, but you can press shift to um, go really fast. You can't, it, it takes, I think, double the time for it to work, um, but anyways, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It, it, ta it, like, it, it takes double the time for people to blink while you're going fast, but that isn't that bad. Um, you can control when people blink, and when you hold down right click when people are looking at you, you should be able to teleport. If you teleport right onto them, then, well, they're dead. SCP-106, uh, aka the old man, is, well, an old man. He, um, he's really OP, but not really. He has a resistance to bullets, so bullets don't do much damage to him. The micro does do a lot of damage to him, though. Um, so do grenades. He can he can place portals and go to them, and he can be killed in his containment chamber, which requires a containment engineer keycard and up. The only keycards that can actually open it is containment engineer 05 and facility manager. To kill him, you need to sacrifice somebody into the femur ricker, and then um, that's pretty much it. He'll die. SCP-049, the Plague Doctor, is a Plague Doctor who thinks everyone has a um, an illness called the Pestilence. He can kill people in one shot and hold E on the bodies to revive them as zombies. He can be OP, but he does not have any shield or anything. So he isn't that OP, but he's still pretty good. SCP-096 is a tall, skinny monster guy um, who is normally calm, but when you look at him, he gets pretty angry and starts, you know, killing people. He can kill in one shot, and if you're 096, you can, um, if you're docile, hold, hold right-click on a door to be quiet, and stop crying, um, and when you're in rage, or otherwise when somebody looks at you, well, uh, you can hold right click to charge and go really fast and kill all the doors yes and you can knock down doors when you're like in rage yeah so 096 is really OP SCP-939 um, also known by the community as dog or doggo or doge or whatever uh, or anything you can call a dog um, is a it's a red dog which some people say is c covered in ketchup N not blood, ketchup. So, anyways, uh, the dog can only see through sound, so if you stay still and crouch and, like, don't move, the dog cannot see you. But if he does see you and you just randomly start crouching, then I don't really think it'll work. Um, you gotta crouch for a set amount of time for it to actually work, so. Yeah. SCP-079 is a computer who can control doors and the lights. Usually just doors, though. Um, 
the more doors he controls and the more SCPs that get killed, the more um the more uh XP he gets. And the more XP he gets, the more levels he get he gets and he can gain more power to unlock bigger doors more often. SCP-914 is a machine that you can put your keycards and other stuff in and upgrade it. Fine and very fine upgrade, but very fine is usually more of a gamble than an upgrade. One to one um, usually gives stuff of the same value and coarse and rough downgrade items. Rough usually more than coarse. There are different roles in SCP Secret Laboratory. Uh, the roles are obviously who you play as. The roles are Scientist, Guard, SCP, and Class D. Uh, there's other roles, but those are only the roles you spawn with. I'll talk about the roles you can spawn as later in game later. The first role we talk about today is Scientists. Scientists are, uh, well, foundation scientists and they are tasked with um, escaping the facility they they avoid SCPs and chaos insurgency unless they agree to be detained by the chaos insurgency which I don't really think the chaos insurgents like to listen to be honest but anyways scientists um, only spawn with a scientist keycard which we talked about um, in per I probably the first section I forgot yeah the first section we talked about the science card um, so yeah, I think that scientists are pretty fun to play as. Next up we have Class D personnel, um, which are basically just Foundation prisoners, and they have nothing on them. They have to escape the facility with nothing, and they don't really have anyone on their side, so this is pretty hard. They do, they do have... Um, Chaos Insurgency on their side, but Chaos Insurgency usually doesn't spawn until later into the game. Next up we have the MTF units. Not just the MTF Lieutenant shown on screen, all MTF units. These are Mobile Task Force peoples who spawn in later to the into the game. You spawn in as one of these or Chaos Insurgency if you are dead. Um, they have a gun and um, their goal is to help scientists escape, kill all SCPs, um, detain D-Class and help them escape, or just kill them if you want. You can kill Chaos Insurgency too, and if you're a lieutenant, you have to listen to your commander, and, and you can tell the privates what to do, which is pretty cool. Chaos Insurgency is an undercover organization that spawns later in game with a truck or a van. All of them have pretty good weapons that cannot be found that cannot be found in the facility and the ammo can't be found in the facility. And their goals are to help Class D escape, kill all MTF and scientists. Guards are well, they're pr they're pretty much guarding the facility. They spawn um, they spawn in at at the start of the round, and they, well, they I I don't really know what to say. They just uh, they have MP7s, and when they see a class D, they detain them, usually, or they can shoot them. If you're a guard, you shouldn't fight SCPs. I recommend just waiting until the MTF comes and backs you up. Navigating light containment can be very hard, but luckily there are these little signs on top of rooms and light. Uh, so, you may be wondering when you first play SCPSL, what do these mean? Like, what do these indicate on the other side of the store? Well, luckily, you're watching this video and I can show you what they do actually mean. So anyways, um, let's just get to it. The first one is HC. Any room that says HC means it's like a the it's a hall, but it's like a curve. It's like in a C shape, not a full C. It's like in a half C, C shape. So if you see one of those, most of them, honestly, um, two of them are in a row usually leads to a dead end. And by dead end, I c I can mean an an exit 
or 914 or 012 or anything that you can't go past. The next room is VT. Um, ro rooms that say VT, like this one, well it doesn't say VT but this is what the content of the room or hall is, is known by the, com uh, by the, meme, com by the meme community as the weed room. And also, it's it's like it's like a greenhouse inside, which is kind of cool, I guess. Um, uh, the 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 room is just pretty much a hall. Um, there is usually a locker or a pedestal in there, if you want something out of it, I guess. So it's pretty nice. Next up, we've got the IT halls, which are in the shape of a T they can lead to two other rooms beside the room you're in. Sorry, besides the room you're in. HS rooms are just straight hallways that lead to another hallway. They're pretty simple to be honest, so yeah. IX hallways are in the shape of an X. They lead to three other rooms besides yourself. So those are those are good. You can use them to find a lot of other rooms. They could also look like a plus sign if you look at if you look at it like another way. Next up we've got the WC labels, which are washrooms or wash closets in this case, I guess. Um, the the uh, WC rooms are pretty much just halls, but stuff can spawn in the women's bathroom now, like guns, which is kind of odd and usually not usually, but sometimes a keycard, so that's pretty nice. Next up we have some dead ends. Um we've got 914 which the label is just 914. 012 the label is 012 for that one too. Uh PC15 the l you guessed it the label is PC15. Next we've got a uh, GR18 which is SCP-372's containment chamber although SCP-372 is not in secret lab. We have SCP-173's chamber, which is labeled as PT-00. We have the Class D chambers, which is where Class D spawn. That is labeled as CD-01. We have the uh, Level 1 Armory in Light Containment, um, also known as the only ar armory in Light Containment. That is uh, hashtag hashtag 00, or just 00. Airlocks is AW0 underscore. Checkpoints is EX under... Um, ex dash underscore and yeah so that should be all of the light containment uh, areas win conditions are what is needed to win or what is needed for each team to win in SCP Secret Lab so Without much further ado, actually, let's just uh, get into the wind condition. The first wind condition, which is usually stalemate, is when SCPs are eliminated, but no scientist escapes, uh, escaped or even survived. A Class D win is when all Foundation staff, like guards, MTF, and scientists, are eliminated, and at least one Class D escapes. An SCP win is when everything except Chaos Insurgency and SCPs are eliminated. One of the things I would like to talk about before the video ends is Tesla Gates. If you're not familiar with Tesla Gates for some reason, um, Tesla Gates are these um, things in heavy containment that when you get close to them, they shoot out electricity. Uh, that does not sound very good, but a way to navigate them is if you see one, l uh, let it like zap electricity and then like immediately just jump past it. You can't be too late or too early. It takes a little bit of practice, but it it eventually gets to you. I hope you learned a lot from this guide, and make sure to leave a comment and tell me if I done anything wrong. And I'm pretty sure I done at least one thing wrong. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, whatever. Um, I'll see you probably in the next episode. Not episode, video. Yeah, I'll see you next. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.